It's time for me to show off my collection of vintage Planet of the Apes on this edition of One on One. Stick around. It's going to be fun. Hey guys, Kevin the Comic Doctor coming to another episode of One on One. And today I am not talking about comic books. That's right. Today I'm not talking about comic books. Uh, I am going to be discussing toys, a certain toy line, a toy line from my youth. It was a company called Mego that put out the Planet of the Apes, the original Planet of the Apes toys. And I want to talk a bit about that today. Now, my first foray into toy collecting, I think, began with the Mego uh, toy lines, the various Mego toy lines. I was pretty fond of the Mego superhero, you know, the little uh, pocket heroes. I love those. I had all these at one point. Now I only have a couple left. But before I, you know, before I even got to those, I was into these guys. These are the Planet of the Eight apes eight inch Mego figures and I absolutely love them and I would play for hours and hours and hours with these guys with my neighbor Cliff he had this huge backyard with a massive uh, sandbox behind his garage and we would create these huge dioramas these like cities these these ape cities that we would create and we'd have so much fun doing that I think half the fun was actually building the cities <laughs> but we, we we played there as well too with the figures and it was a heck of a lot of fun a lot of great memories and it wasn't until probably around you know the mid 90s where I dug up some of my old toys and I found some of my original Mego Planet of the Apes figures and I began doing some research I went to a place called the Mego Museum I'm going to talk about that a little later and I started discovering all the figures that uh, were released and it became my, I guess, I am a collector, right? It became my duty to hunt down and finish my Planet of the Apes collection, which I have now done. And today I'm going to share those with you. Now, I really do believe the to the toys that I collected as a child, whether it be the Planet of the Apes toys or later on, you know, these superhero toys I was talking about or um, even into going into Star Wars later on, these really led me down the road towards the comic world, right? It introduced me to the, the fandom world, I guess you could say. Uh, I started loving these properties, these movie properties, sci-fi, fantasy, what have you. Um, and I love them all. And collecting the toys became a really big part of my childhood. And luckily I had parents that, well, they spoiled me a little bit. And I... I I picked up a lot of these toys and, um, and as I, you know, grew out of them and put them away into storage, now have started to rediscover them again. I have been collecting and finishing off what I did not finish way back in the seventies and eighties. Unfortunately, now it's a little more expensive to buy these, especially if they're still packaged, but nonetheless, I'm doing my best to finish off a lot of the toy lines that I really loved as a child. Um, let's talk about Mego really quickly. If you don't know what Mego even is, Mego was a company that uh, became really famous in the 1970s for being the first, the first toy company to license intellectual properties from movies, television, comic books, you name it. Okay, and it was a great move because it propelled Mego to the top of the of the toy, I guess, the toy kingdoms, as it were. They they were the boy toy manufacturer and distributor throughout the entire 1970s. And it wasn't until they lost the bid for the Star Wars line that they started to see their demise. When Kenner took the, 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 the Star Wars line, Mego soon thereafter, unfortunately, went bankrupt. Um, but nonetheless, before that time, they made a heck of a lot of awesome toys. And I'm going to share my favorite line with you today. Now, the original Planet of the Apes movie was released in 1968 and was a massive hit. It won awards for uh, amazing prosthetics and, uh, you know, special effects makeup design. Uh, it was an amazing look at a post-apocalyptic world, and it was sci-fi at its absolute best. And even as a, a young kid, and I was born in 71, I didn't see Planet of the Apes probably until the, sometime in the mid to late 70s. It resonated with me even at that age. You know, it was it was a movie that I, I was drawn to. It spawned several sequels, and because of that, Mego jumped on the opportunity to create toys for the for the for the movie line for the movies. But then 
20th Century Fox went one step further and decided to bring the monkeys to the small screen and had a and created a small screen version of one hour episodes weekly of the Planet of the Apes with new characters and new adventures. And again, this lent very well to the toy line. Now, by the, I guess you could say 1974, 1975, the movies are being released on television, uh, I guess in conjunction with the series. The series was short-lived, by the way. It only lasted a year, I believe, one season. Um, but nonetheless, the kids loved it. The show went into, I guess, syndication, the reruns, what have you. And Ape Fever kind of dominated the, the early to mid-1970s. Before Star Wars came out, Planet of the Apes was huge. Anyways, these are the toys that I had as a kid and others that I picked up along the way. I hope you enjoy. Okay, so like I said, we're going to take a look at the, the, the actual action figures that I owned as a kid. Uh, we're going to start off with Dr. Zaius. And as you can see, uh, Dr. Zaius uh, is the only orangutan figure that was made in the entire line. Um, he is probably after Cornelius, probably the most famous of all the apes in all the series uh, and, and through the movies and TV series. And uh, again, an amazing head sculpt with a fantastic uh, costume and boots. And take a look at, the, I'm going to do a close-up of these boots. Check out these boots. Even the boot sculpt has that very recognizable planet of the ape um, I guess you could say a font, right? That we see in the movies. So there it is. Now this actual figure is not my figure from when I was a kid. Mine was was broken <laughs> while while playing with it. And for many years, I just uh, used masking tape to fix his knee and his bottom, the bottom portion of his leg. Uh, this one was another one I picked up at the Mego Meet, actually in uh, in uh, Wheeling, uh, North North. Uh, Wheeling, West Virginia, there we go, uh, many years ago, over 10 years ago, I picked up a few of the ones I needed, and this was one. Now, the outfit that this Dr. Zayas is actually wearing is original, and it's the one that mine wore uh, for many, many years through all the uh, adventures that I put him through. Okay, let's have a look at the next two that I own. Okay, so next we're going to have a look at everybody's favorite chimpanzees. We have Cornelius and Zira. Now, these again are original to my collection. These are the two that I've owned forever and ever. Um, now, Zira was the only female action figure in the line. And Cornelius um, was actually produced kind of twice, right? You had Cornelius and you had Galen. Now, Cornelius was the chimp that we all saw in the movies, uh, the Planet of the Apes movies. When they went to television, they created a new character. It was supposed to be Cornelius' grandson named Galen. And so if you have a look here, I'll put it on the screen right now. So there you go. You can have a look and see. Uh, the, the action figures are identical. All you see is a difference in the name. And the card back is slightly different as well too. So you get Cornelius and you have Galen. So... Now, I'm not sure if mine was purchased as a Galen or as a Cornelius. I'm going to say probably a Galen because uh, the joints on him are are type 2. Now, what do I mean by type 2? Again, I'm going to cut away here and show you this. All of the Mego figures, the early Mego figures, uh, their joints, their, their wrists and their ankles were uh, affixed using rivets, metal rivets. Later models were were joined using joints, plastic joints like these here. So now this Cornelius has as a type two. So again, I call him a Cornelius. I've always referred to him as Cornelius, but he probably was a Galen. I really don't remember. All right, let's see which other figure I had as a kid. One of my favorite action figures from this time period was General Urko. Now, he was the bad guy. Now, check out this dude's outfit. Purple, spandex, <laughs> and uh, pleather throughout. He was the, 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 the big bad guy who caused Cornelius and Zira and uh, all my other apes so much trouble. Anyways, this again is original. I've had this one since I was a little boy. And again, because General Urko appeared in the TV series... It would make sense that, you know, I'd have this one, and I do. And uh, you'll notice, again, I'll look over here. He comes complete with uh, his knife and uh, M16. Now, a funny thing about these M16s, right here, I'll show them to you. Now, this one here, actually, is this a repro? I think this is actually a repop, this one. 
Yeah, I believe this is a repro. But these are the machine guns that came with uh, the, the the apes at that time. Now these do not look like the, the guns that were used in Planet of the Apes in the movies or the TV series. Obviously what Amigo has done here is they've actually borrowed equipment and tools and tooling from an earlier line called Action Jackson. Now Action Jackson was a line that was was, was quite popular in the early 70s and Amigo put those out to compete with Mattel's G.I. Joe, the big, tall, eight, uh, not, they're probably 10 inch, were they 10 inch G.I. Joes? They were quite large, my brother had those. Um, my brother is six years older than I am, but he had the, the larger G.I. Joe figures. Um, so uh, the Action Jackson was quite successful. Then when, the, when Mego went off and started doing these Planet of the Apes figures and other figures too in the, in the superheroes and in the other, in the other um, lines, they borrowed some items from the Action Jackson line and these machine guns are obviously from that line. Anyways, that's General Urko. There is one more figure that I, that I had as a kid. I'm going to show them to you right now. One sec. So you're going to notice uh, this is not an ape. Yeah, that's right. Migo actually put out three human figures as well to be adversaries to the apes. And Alan Verdon was uh, one of the characters found in the short-lived TV series. Now, this is the one I had as a kid. Um, and uh, I never could find the other human, and that was Peter Burke. But I found him. That's right. I found Peter Burke. And again, I want to show you this, guys, really close up. Look how awesome these clothes are. Not only does he have a, a, a burlap vest, he also has like a nylon, uh, like a spandex nylon type uh, shirt. And then he's got like a cotton type uh, pant. Of course, the moccasins that uh, we see on a lot of... Um, a lot of figuring figures with the Migos. You see those with all, you know, with, with, with Galen and Cornelius. Um, you also see these moccasins and other lines. I think there's a, the Wild West line. I think some of the native uh, characters have these moccasins as well. So they were re repurposed again for Planet of the Apes. I'll put these two together. There you go. So you have Alan, uh, Alan Verdon and Peter Burke. These are the two main characters that were seen, and like I said, in a short-lived Planet of the Apes TV series. Do you notice anything interesting about these figures in comparison to other action-type shows of the genre of that time period of the 1970s and early 80s? Well, I do. There's obviously a formula going on here, and I'm not sure where it started, to be honest. But you have two white leads. One's blonde. One's brunette. Right, and we see this this uh, again this formula used again and again and again in other TV series. Uh, the ones that come to mind really quick: Chips, The Dukes of Hazard, Starsky and Hutch. Right, just to name a few. So we do see these types of uh, characters used in other TV series as well. And you know, maybe it started with Planet of the Apes. I don't know. I'm trying to rack my brain if uh, any other series kind of use that similar formula too. I don't know if they did. Anyhow. Peter Burke, Alan Verdon. Now, by the way, the Peter Burke evaded me for many, many years. And where did I find him? I finally found him at Comic Alley Toys in Oshawa. They, again, they have a lot of vintage toys there. I found it about five or six years ago. I wasn't even going there looking for it. I was there buying comic books. I looked down and there was Peter Burke. I've always needed him and the price tag was sweet. So I grabbed them and added them to my collection. Well, Alan Verdon and Peter Burke were not the only two human uh, action figures that were used in this line. In fact, earlier, before them, uh, the first human uh, action figure was just the generic astronaut. That's right. There was no name given to this character, which was kind of strange because uh, the Charlton Heston character, Taylor, was obviously the main protagonist in the original Planet of the Apes movie. Now, I don't know why they didn't use the name Taylor. Perhaps it was a, a thing to do with a contract with, with Heston. Perhaps he didn't want his likeness to be uh, used. I have no idea. Anyways... Um, the astronaut evaded me as well for many, many years. I picked this one up online, eBay purchased sometime uh, in the late 90s. And again, check out the outfit on him. And I would not be a bit surprised if the head sculpt on this, and some of you Migo aficionados will probably know this answer right off the bat, that the head sculpt and even the, the, body, uh, the body jumpsuit, the belt, the boots, even the helmet, were these previously used in an Action Jackson set. I have a feeling they probably were. I could be wrong, but um, 
it, this certainly could easily have been an Action Jackson character as well that was just repurposed for Planet of the Apes. So here you have it, the warrior ape, the generic warrior ape. I guess you could have had 10 of these, just like you could have 10 stormtroopers in your Star Wars collection or five or 10 Gamorrean guards, whatever. This was the generic warrior ape um, that was released. And again, you could have many of them. Uh, this one, again, pretty awesome uh, design, great head sculpt. The tunic is fantastic uh, and the boots. Uh, again, comes complete with the machine gun, the M16 there as well. Now this one, you know what, I believe most figures probably had some kind of variance, but I know this particular figure did have variance in terms of its costuming and um, and, and the, the coloring of the costuming, right? So you can get different variations on the on the color of the tunic, the, the, the pleather, whatever. But uh, again, a figure that I never owned myself personally, that my, again, my neighbor had it, so I never felt the need to go out and brush out and buy one, so I never did. But I did pick him up many years later, and now as a part of the collection. And now for my final figure. Now the next figure I'm gonna show you was one that I really, really wanted, but never could find, never ever. Sit back. Here we go, give me one sec. Now this is my last figure, General Ursus. This is a figure I searched, I remember searching for this guy when I was a kid and never being able to find him. I don't know, they must have had, you know, 10 Urkos to every single one Ursus. I never could find him. So I picked this guy up at, again, that aforementioned uh, Mego Meet in, in uh, West Virginia many, many years ago. I was so happy to add him to my collection. He was the one that, uh, him and Peter Burke were the two that evaded me for such a long time. And I just love the head sculpt on this particular figure. Really, he's a gorilla ape. He's basically a warrior ape um, in terms of his tunic and his, his, his pants and boots. Pretty much the same, but we add a much, I think, meaner head sculpt. And uh, with the red lips and the red nose, I always just love this figure for some reason. Uh, let me let me uh, show him to you a little closer because I don't know if you can actually see it. I'll bring it actually up on the screen here. Yeah, there we go. Look at that. I I just love this figure, and uh, so happy to finally add him to my collection. Actually, I just discovered now, as I'm uh, doing this video, his thumb is busted, which I'm not happy about. Right there. His thumb is busted. I don't think you can see that, but it is. Anyways, guess I gotta find myself another uh, body here, gorilla body. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much really uh, it. That is my Mego Planet of the Ape collection. And um, it, uh, it's a collection that I, like I said, I've put together over several years and it's, it's, it's pretty much complete. Now, Mego, they're not, they're, they weren't stupid. They put out a lot of accessories for the, the Planet of the Apes line as well, too. There were horses, horses with moving feet. There was a catapult. I remember I own the catapult. I have that somewhere. Uh, there was, a, you know, wagons and there was the treehouse, which I actually owned. I wish I still did. That treehouse, the Planet of the Apes treehouse was amazing. There was the Forbidden Zone, as well, a playset as well. So they put out lots of playsets and accessories for these guys. Um, and I didn't, honestly, I did not get into them that much because honestly, as I mentioned earlier, my neighbor and I, we create our own dioramas. We create our own, our own, um, play sets in the sand, right? And, and these action figures lent themselves to that. If you watch Planet of the Apes, the TV series or the movies, the environment is the great outdoors, right? The woods or the, you know, uh, <laughs> or, 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 or your backyard, it worked well. So we just made do with what we had and it was a heck of a lot of fun and there were a lot of good times uh, playing with the Mego figures back in the day. Now, my question to you, did you play with Mego action figures? Did you own Mego action figures when you were a young kid? Uh, if so, which were your favorite lines? Did you play at the Planet of the Apes or was, was another line one of your favorites? Please let me know in the comment section below. Also, um, do any of you still collect Mego figures? Did you know Mego has now started putting out figures again? That's right. Um, CEO of Mego, Marty Abrams. Uh, has now, uh, I guess you could say, relaunched Mego. Uh, you can now buy new 
uh, eight inch Mego action figures. In fact, they, they've added on to the Planet of the Apes line. You can, yeah, I think you can actually buy some of these original characters. They look, they look identical to the old ones, but now they've added more and some of them look really, really good. So if you haven't done so already, check those out. I'm sure there's a Mego website. In fact, I'll find you the Mego uh, YouTube channel or webpage and I'll put it in the in the uh, info section below. I'm also in the bottom, in the info section below, also going to put down for you a link to the Mego Museum. Now, the Mego Museum, is fantastic if you want to know anything about Mego that's the place you're going to find it and there's a great community there with people who are real die-hard Mego fans they can answer any questions you might have about the, any of the toy lines for that matter also if you are particularly fond of the Planet of the Apes uh, local toy historian, I guess you could call him, uh, the Plaid Stallion. He has uh, a great YouTube channel and he did an entire episode on the history of the Mego Planet of the Apes line. I'm also going to put a link to that YouTube video on here. Give him a follow. He is a wealth of knowledge. Anyways, guys, that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed this, this uh, delve into the world of toys. I know it's not comics. It's toys. Uh, again, my other passion. I hope to do more videos like this one. Um, keep your eye out because I want to talk about the, the, the Mego DC heroes and the Mego uh, Marvel heroes as well as the Mego Universal Monsters. Well, they're not Universal Monsters. The, the, the Mego Monsters series. Those are my favorites. Anyways, guys, that's it for me. Take care. Thanks for popping by. And until next time, see you later.